Welcome to Mrs. Harmison's Smart Board video on balancing equations. To balance an equation, first list all of the elements on the left side of the equation. This equation has zinc on the left side, hydrogen, and chlorine. Then, list the elements on the right side in the same order as the left. Zinc, hydrogen, and chlorine. Notice that I wrote the elements in the same order as my list on the left side, not the order that they appear in the equation. Writing the elements in the same order makes it easy to check if the equation is balanced later. Next, count the number of atoms of each element found on each side of the equation. The left side has one element of, atom of zinc, one atom of hydrogen, and one atom of chlorine. The right side has one atom of zinc, two atoms of hydrogen, and two atoms of chlorine. The law of conservation of mass tells us that matter cannot be created or destroyed. Therefore, we know that there must be the same number of each type of atom before and after the reaction takes place. This equation has a different number of atoms of both chlorine and hydrogen on each side. This equation is not balanced. When balancing equations, you will add coefficients to even out the number of atoms of a certain element on each side. Never change the subscripts. In this equation, zinc is already balanced. There is one atom of zinc on the left side and one atom of zinc on the right side. The hydrogen, however, is not balanced. The right side has two atoms of hydrogen while the left only has one. We need to make it so this is even. In order to make the hydrogens even, we must add a coefficient of 2 before the hydrogen on the left side. Then, we must change the number in our list. We now have two hydrogens on the left side, and we also have two chlorines. Now if we compare the list of numbers, they are the same. 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2. This equation is now balanced. When balancing equations that have polyatomic ions in them, the easiest thing to do is to leave each polyatomic ion together while you balance the equation. You can only do this, however, if you have the exact same polyatomic ion on the right side as you do on the left. In this equation, when we go to list the elements, we start with iron, and then the next thing that we have is sulfate, SO4. We can look on the right side and see that we do have sulfate on the right side as well, so we can leave the sulfate together. Remember, the subscripts that go with polyatomic ions are important to leave in the polyatomic ion. Next we have potassium. And then we have a hydroxide polyatomic ion. If we look on the right side, we see that we also have a hydroxide polyatomic ion there. So we can list OH in our list of elements on the right side, left side. We have the same elements in polyatomic ions on the right side, so we list them in the same order as we did on the left. And then we count how many we have of each. Here we have two irons. This 3 tells us that we have 3 sulfates, we have 1 potassium, 
and one hydroxide on the left side. On the right side, we have only one iron, we have one sulfate, we have two potassiums, and we have three hydroxides. So we can clearly see that this equation isn't balanced. Our numbers go 2, 3, 1, 1, and 1, 1, 2, 3. So let's begin to balance the equation. Remember, you never change the subscripts of the equation. You can only add coefficients. There are two irons on the left side, so let's make it so that there are two irons on the right side. We have to change our numbers now. We have two irons, and now you take 2 times the subscript of 3 and find that you have 6 hydroxides. Our numbers are still not balanced. We have 2, 3, 1, 1 and 2, 1, 2, 6, so we have to keep working at it. There are 3 sulfates on the left side, so let's make it so that there are 3 sulfates on the right side. Now we have to change our numbers again. There were two potassiums. We added a subscript of three. So we multiply three times two to get six potassiums. And now this, this coefficient tells us that we have three sulfates. Now we have 2311 and 2366. We need to have six potassiums and six hydroxides on the left side. So we put a coefficient of six before this compound. We change our numbers, and now we see that our numbers match. 2, 3, 6, 6, 2, 3, 6, 6. This equation is balanced. Anytime that you have water in an equation, you can rewrite water as H and OH. This doesn't change the compound, it just rearranges the elements. This is helpful when you have hydroxide and hydrogen on the left side of the equation, and it can make it much easier to balance the equation. Now we can write aluminum, hydroxide, because we have the hydroxide over here now, um, hydrogen, and sulfate, because we have a sulfate on the right side. We list the elements in the same order on the right side. And then we count the number on each side. Here we have one aluminum, three hydroxide, two hydrogen, and one sulfate. Here we have two aluminum, three sulfate, one hydrogen, and one hydroxide. Our equation is not balanced. Our numbers don't match up. So we start to make it balanced. We have one aluminum on the left and two on the right. So we can put a 2 before the aluminum. That changes the aluminum to a 2 and the hydroxide to a 6. Now we have 6 hydroxides on the left side and only 1 on the right. So we can put a 6 before our water, or our HOH, which gives us then 6 hydroxides and 6 hydrogens. Now the only thing we have left to balance is this sulfuric acid. We have six hydrogens on the right, only two on the left. So if we put a three before this compound, that fixes that. Now we have both six hydrogens on both sides, and we have three sulfates. Now our numbers match up. Two, six, six, three, 2663 this equation is balanced